Free Body Diagrams Before we dive into the topic of free body diagrams, let me ask you a quick question, is force a vector or a scalar quantity? Think about it. Force is a vector. A vector means it has both magnitude and direction. So if you push something, you're not just pushing with a certain amount of strength, you're also pushing in a specific direction. Let's imagine there is a bowl on the table. Let's apply a force of 5 newtons to push it in right direction. Let's look at this arrow here. This represents a force of 5 newtons to the right. The length of the arrow shows the size of the force, and the arrow points in the direction of the force. Now, why do you think knowing the direction of a force is important? What would happen if you pushed something in the opposite direction? Forces in opposite directions can cancel each other out, or change the object's motion. That's why we pay attention to both the size and the direction of every force we apply. So, what are the forces acting on this bowl? There is this force which we applied, there is a gravitational force pulling it down, there is a normal force exerted by the table upwards and then there are forces of air resistance and friction acting towards the left. Then, why did the object still move towards the right? The upward and downward forces cancel each other. So there is no question of object moving in vertical direction. The bowl moves to the right because the force of 5 newtons towards the right is more than the sum of these two forces acting toward the left. Also, notice the size of the arrows. If the magnitude is more, the size of the arrow is also larger. We can represent all these external forces on an object using a free body diagram. A free body diagram visually represents all the forces acting on an object. To draw a free body diagram, we first represent the object with a dot. Then draw arrows from the shape to show each force acting on it. Let's draw a free body diagram in this scenario where the bowl on the table is our object. First draw a dot to represent the object under study. Then, draw the downward arrow showing the gravitational force and the upward arrow showing the normal force equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Next, draw the right arrow showing the applied force towards the right and the left arrows showing the force of friction and air resistance acting towards the left on the object. The free body diagrams give a clear idea of the direction in which the object will move. In this case, the object will move towards the right because the upward and downward forces cancel out each other and the applied force is more than the sum of the forces of friction and air resistance. Let's draw a free body diagram for a bucket being pulled up out of a well by a rope. So, in this scenario, the free body diagram would include two main forces. An upward force from the tension in the rope and a downward force due to gravity. Since the bucket is accelerating upward, the tension force is greater than the gravitational force, causing the net force to be directed upward, in line with the bucket's acceleration. There's no horizontal motion in this scenario because all forces acting on the bucket are vertical. The tension in the rope pulls the bucket directly upward, and gravity pulls it downward. Since there's no horizontal force applied to the bucket, it doesn't move sideways. Let's break down free body diagrams for a car in four different scenarios, at rest, moving at constant velocity, speeding up, and slowing down. When the car accelerates, the applied force is greater than friction, creating a net force that makes the car speed up. When braking, friction from the brakes becomes stronger than the applied force, causing the car to slow down until it stops. When a car is at rest, the forces are balanced. The gravitational force pulls the car down, and the normal force from the ground pushes it up. The car doesn't move because these forces cancel each other out. When a car moves at a constant speed, the forces are still balanced. The applied force from the engine equals the frictional force, so the car maintains its velocity without accelerating or decelerating. Free body diagrams help us visualize forces acting on an object. Understanding these diagrams makes it easier to analyze motion and forces in physics. Thank you for watching.